So I'm going to, uh, this talk today is mostly uh, clinical, but there'll be some sections, some theory in here as well, just to, for some of you who don't, aren't familiar with syntonics and just some of the basic ideas of uh, syntonics, there's some, some of that in there as well. So I'm going to give you an overview of some of the technologies and approaches, techniques that are being used to treat learning problems and specifically in our office reading problems, reading and attention problems. And that will go from uh, present day all the way back, well actually back to the 20s to present day. So some of the topics we're going to cover are Erlen lenses. Many of you have probably heard of these overlays and tints. Um, syntonic phototherapy, some theory and treatment, uh, information about magnoparvo processing systems, which are one of the newest uh, models of uh, major problems with reading in terms of processing information, uh, color, some little bit on color puncture, neuroentrainment, uh, light, sound, and motion, and environmental concerns, and uh, John Ott, Harry Wolforth, uh, Rudolf Steiner. So, uh, one of the things that's been in the news for many years now is the use of Erlen lenses. And these are uh, certain tints that students wear to help their reading performance. And it's based on a diagnosis of something that Helen Erlen called scotopic sensitivity syndrome. And that's a uh, syndrome that she defined as uh, too much light coming into the person, and in fact, there's kind of a noise factor, and the, and the light that they look at overwhelms their visual system, and they have to stop. They have to start screening information out, and in doing so, they lose their ability to read coherently. And she likens it to there's a specific allergy to certain light frequencies that certain wavelengths we're just not receptive to, as Jacob talked about. But in the, in the case of these children, their sensitivity prevents them from processing the visual word. The word will bounce around on the page. They can't concentrate. There's a lot of motion and movement to the print. She developed a system of prescribing about 140 tints to eliminate this un, these unwanted wavelengths. So there's, she views it as screening out the wavelengths that create the noise in the visual and auditory processing systems. And uh, the tints may be prescribed by something called colorimetry. And uh, there's a fella in, uh, in England who developed, I can't think of his name at the moment, that developed a whole system of colorimetry to prescribe tints. In the classroom, teachers often use overlays. They'll, they'll, have, hundred, they'll have a couple hundred uh, acetate sheets with tints on them, and they'll put them on the written page and see if the student's performance, oh, thank you, thank you, if, if the student's performance will be enhanced by using these overlays. So it's uh, very practical, done in the classroom, and, they, and they, it helps a lot of children. Uh, from the standpoint of optometrists, we view uh, a lot of these symptoms and signs and problems these kids have as vision problems. Their eyes can't coordinate, they can't move easily, the page jumps around because their eyes can't stay focused or coordinated on what they're looking at. So there's the, the perception that uh, using these kinds of overlays and tints mask underlying vision problems, and that's controversial within the profession of optometry, to the extent that many people disregard her work, but her work is, is certainly based on a lot of clinical experience and a lot of efficacy. I mean, it works, but it, they don't really understand how it works. So one of the ways it's postulated or theorized that this system works is by describing what happens in what's called the magnoparvocellular processing. Now, what that means is that, um, that in your visual field around you, you have a central field that has a whole pathway through your brain, through the nervous system, that processes only what in a small area in the center part of where you're looking, the figure. And then there's a whole magno processing pro uh, system that processes your peripheral vision. And this peripheral vision serves to very quickly process the vision of the past and the future. That is, like say you're reading along, the, the, parvo, the magno system, the peripheral system anticipates where you're going to go, leads your central vision to that place, and then extinguishes or erases what was right behind it. 
And if this Magno system isn't processing w well because it's either has defects in it, which I'll show you, or whether it has a timing problem, it can't time itself with the central vision, then you have problems processing, uh, moving your eyes along, keeping your eyes in place, but you also have comprehension problems because of what is, was just seen isn't extinguished quick enough, it gets mixed up with what you're looking at. And so you can have reversals, you can have loss of place, but you can have things moving around, but you have loss of reading performance. So it's theorized that Helen Erlen lenses in some way help synchronize the timing between these two systems. Now she didn't come up with that, but other researchers have. One in particular named is Harold Solon. But this whole system is very important. Now, uh, these large, fast processing cells, again, are the, are the, lead, the leading edge of what's going to come to where you're going to put your attention and where you've just seen. Now, the other thing is that the, Mar the Magno and the uh, Parvo systems, in terms of their whole processing of the visual system, have co right with them, coincident with them, auditory processing. So if you have a problem in the visual processing problem set, one of these systems, you'll also have problems in the auditory processing part. And unfortunately, much of what uh, special ed teachers teach and reading teachers uh, teach is based on the idea that reading and learning is mostly a language-based processing. And they ignore the visual system completely. And you can't do that. I mean, it's ridiculous, actually. It's absurd. But the medical people, the, the, let's say the, uh, the medical people in the United States actually say that they've come out with statements, which they did even this year, that vision has nothing to do with learning and reading. Nothing to do with it. They view vision as nothing more than looking at a, at a letter on the wall or the optical system itself. They don't look at the processing systems and they ignore it but they go to the extent of actually denying the existence of vision's involvement in learning and reading. And of course, as eye doctors, we think that's, those of us who practice this approach think it's like the most dominant system of all. So, uh, what, uh, <clears throat> what Solon found in his research was that people who had reading deficits had, had defects in this, this peripheral system and it affected their visual attention and reading comprehension. They did many tests and, and, and quantified these defects. And it said that it loses the motor control and uh, the timing. And so what they found is that when they used blue tints, they were able to synchronize the timing between the systems uh, in the most profound way. However, I'm going to show you later that it, you can use all the colors because what it is, it's a, it's a peripheral vision problem and there's many, many colors you can use to reestablish this Magno system and coordinate it. So, so what Erlen is saying is that you're overwhelmed and you have to screen out things. What Solon is actually saying, you're not assimilating things so it, that you can't take in certain frequencies. So it's more of a syntonic approach. We give frequencies to re establish a sensitivity to the system, not diminish its sensitivity because it's overwhelmed. So it's two different models talking about the same thing. Part of it, just briefly, uh, Don's going to go into this in more detail, but as a behavioral optometrist, one of the premises is that vision is learned. It's a developed process. You can train all the skills of vision, eye movement, the ability to Take your eyes and converge them and diverge them. That tells you that tells you where things are in space. You can train the ability to focus, which has to do with the lens in your eye and muscles push on the lens and adjust the, the light.